Good morning, good day, or good evening, depending where you're at at the moment. I just hope that all of you are, first of all, safe, you know, that you are smart about the whole situation and that you are listening to the authorities and uh, obeying, you know, just, just being smart and uh, doing those simple things, spending as much time as you can at home. I think this is the, the first priority. And I think the internet now it's you know something that can help us all so much uh, in actually doing these things because you know imagine you're at home and you don't have internet. Okay, you you could have you know books and all this, but with internet we can actually do so much and this is why I'm really you know grateful that I can have these lives and uh, all the other many other people everybody I'm really you know grateful that I can have these lives and uh, all the other many other people everybody can get more involved and uh, connect with each other in this way so we can create the network and stay together in all of this and again the purpose of this video is to kind of share some of my suggestions or advice something that uh, you can still keep doing while you're at home and i'm sure you you've heard uh, a lot of advice from different people and uh which is great so i'm just here to you know give you my two cents uh sort of to say so i prepared a couple of couple of useful things that you can do while at home you know of course we're talking about tennis here obviously I will not talk about specific tennis training here I'm not going to talk about doing serves or forehands or backhands in your apartment or, or at your home but I'm gonna definitely talk about tennis and different kind of preparation so not physical I mean not not tennis physical not playing uh, tennis specifically, but that doesn't mean that <clears throat> you will not be able to to train because uh, you will see that you are you are able and capable of do of doing so much without even knowing. As long as you can kind of develop certain routines, habits, and some of some of these uh, might be considered as skills such as, you know, doing this uh, very precise uh, visualization, which can actually take you on court and literally make you feel like you're training. And uh, most, most of that it's mental, so it's in your mind. But uh, anyways, I, I really want to thank all of you for joining. And uh, here in Shanghai, it's 10.30 a.m. So I, I know this is uh, kind of getting late in U.S., and that's where most of you are most of you are from so 9 or 10 a.m or 8 if you're more on the west coast in the u.s um, i was just trying to find the, the best time and usually and also based on the on the poll like i made a voting most of you said that this time so it's like late weekend like late late sunday would be a good timing but i guess at this moment any other time could work because uh, most of you are at home. So I guess I can experiment even, even more with that. So thanks so much for joining everyone. Uh, let's see if we already have some questions, but I already prepared certain things I want to share. So I'm going to definitely go through the list. But anyways, the topic is uh, how you're spending time at home and uh, definitely being smart about the whole situation. I don't need to repeat that, but uh, still, hopefully, People will listen. Hello from Colombia. Hello for Shanghai. Olivia. Nihama. Hello from Spain. Subman from the quarantine city of San Francisco. Hello, Julio. What's up, Tony? 
Salazar, have you get virus tested in China? Some say no symptoms. Uh, no need. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I spent the whole time here in China and been feeling good. Didn't travel anywhere and been training all the time, so it should be all good. Hello, I'm back watching the next live stream. Hello from Hong Kong. Favorite racket of all time. I didn't honestly experiment too much. I kind of stick with a with the same racket, it was usually Wilson, and I really like the, the Pro Stuff, Wilson Pro Stuff series, and then how it evolved slowly. Now I'm using the blades, but before I used to play with Pro Stuff. I'm back. Are you going to visit Europe soon? I hope so, but it's very tough now to plan anything. Hello for Dubai. Greetings. I'm watching during online school. Car. <laughs> online school, you gotta focus, okay? This is only in, in the breaks. We'll be here for you. Uh, yes, I'm in China, Shanghai. I am Serbian, yes, but I live in China and I've been here for already four years. I've been working here, but uh, I still basically I live in Serbia, but I'm working here and uh, we'll see how everything goes. Hello for Korea. I love your tennis content. Thanks, Warren. Really appreciate it. Mike, you. How many hours do you practice each day? Mike, uh, thanks for question. This is a very relative and kind of, you know, it, it's not easy to say. It depends what period and what kind of hours. If I'm also teaching and coaching and then training for myself, it can be seven, eight hours. If we're talking about just when I'm preparing for tournaments, let's say if I go back in time before I was coaching, so I was only focused on my trainings, it will be maybe around three, four hours of tennis one and a half hour of fitness and then plus some additional stretching so close to six hours maybe on average when i'm like fully training um starting tomorrow on monday i'm on monday i'm going to work out one day legs and cardio the other day upper body that sounds great are you going to train on red clay courts Again, in Spain, top spin, you know. Yeah, I love red clay, and I, I like Spain. I like the, the course in Spain, and pretty much anywhere in Europe, uh, I really miss it. Hopefully, I can do that soon. Hopefully, all this will go away, and we will get control of it everywhere around the world, so we can play more, travel more, and have more fun on the courts. I'm a new player, and do you know why I tend to hit frame of when you're just new to the game, you don't have the feel of the spacing and the ball. The your perception of the ball is, you know, still in the in the, in the beginning. Like you're developing that skill, so you just have to play more and uh, focus on your movement. You need to get used to other than tennis. Nope. At the moment, I'm 100% locked in on tennis. Uh, yes, Warren. Why not? Shout out. Uh, truth never lies, Brown. Hello from UK. Really enjoyed all the videos. Massive love from England. That's that's uh, awesome. Thanks. Uh, I guess your Sampras. Very tough call, but I I watched the. I have some videos uh, when I was a kid. There was an interview at some tournament. They asked, uh, "Who's your idol?" And at that moment, it was Andre Agassi. But if I if I need to think now. I, I might even say Sampras because now I'm, I'm more into this, you know, servant volleys and playing a bit more different styles, even though Agassi was also special. I mean, they're both like icons. Coach from California. Hello. Thanks for joining. Jin Jin, please report. Are the Chinese telling the truth when they say Corona cases are drastically decreasing? Yes, for sure. Everything is almost back to normal. I was going to downtown yesterday using Metro. Of course, everybody's still wearing masks. Every single person on the streets wears the mask, but everything is kind of opening, you know, all the restaurants and coffee shops, everything is open, but people are still very careful. But definitely, uh, it's it's much better situation here under control. But we've been through the tough period for the previous almost two months. So now, you know, only because of all the sacrifices and the measures, Everything is getting much better. 
All right, Carl, take care. What's the difference in a kick serve and play serve, and when should you use those serves? Well, it's an obvious difference. It's the the bounce, you know, the the rotation of the ball and the direction after after the bounce. So the kick serves you usually use when you want to either make the opponent like get in an uncomfortable position with a high bounce. So usually to the back and side, so they have to return from, from a very high con with a very very high contact point or you want to push them out wide you know if you're right-handed and you're serving on the ad side you go to that wide corner and uh on the left is opposite but you can use the kick serve also serving down the tee on both sides it, it's very it's, it's variable it's up to your creativity and how you can use your your tactics the slice serve obviously is a uh, is good serve to go uh serve body down the body like and also down the tee depends again on the side the slice tends to bounce uh, away from the opponent as well when you use it correctly this is a bit more difficult to talk about in this way this is a it's maybe a good topic for some video i might i might make a video on that so yeah i can write a note on that so thanks tony i will try to get when i have time video on that <clears throat> so slice it's spin very simple topic yet i don't think i made any videos on that so it will be interesting to make it you played with city do you think he's overrated uh, he's not consistent <laughs> I, I don't think he's overrated. I think he's number six in the world. And uh, he's definitely one of the best in the world and uh, super consistent. I mean, especially considering the, 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 the way he plays, he's not playing like a typical tennis at the moment. He's one of the players who are a little bit different. And this is why I think he will have a great chance, you know, to become number one in, in the future, you know. So it will be great to see him like evolve. Who is the heaviest hitter that you practice with? Sean. Uh, interesting question. I would say the heaviest probably like who is hitting the ball. Usually they're like kind of easy, but uh, even Djokovic, he, he can like really start like hitting super heavy balls after some time when he's not going for those big shots. Uh, Kukushkin, he's... Uh, not necessarily heavy, but it's very, very difficult to, to play with. And he has very fast shots and uh, some different rotations, spins, especially that back end. It can be very tough to control. And also this last year, I, I trained with the uh, Poprin, uh, the, the very tall guy, the young guy, and he's also like smacking the balls. But uh, yeah, there, there, there are some other guys I cannot really think of at the moment uh tennis sangren sangren as well uh they're lying i knew it is it still spreading in china second wave infections i did not hear of that for me everything looks much better now and it, it seems like it's under control under control yeah we have six inch spacing between people here in california We're able to do that where you're in china Six six inch spacing, uh, six inch. I don't really understand. That means that's the rule. You have to stay like only six inches between. I think uh, that's definitely not enough. You need to have at least uh, one meter here or a meter and a half. Favorite players? There are many, many. It's very tough to 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 put one, but definitely I like Djokovic, uh, the greatest ever. You know, Feder is always a joy, a joy to watch. But I also like players like Monfield, you know, playing a little bit different. And those guys who are uh, trying to come up with different shots. Uh, even Curious, you know, can be interesting to watch, even though he sometimes acts uh, not appropriately. Uh, and players like uh, Darcis, is it Steve, Steve Darcis? Uh, oh, sorry. Da 
No, no, that's Dustin Brown. He is amazing. Like those super talented players. <clears throat> so, Brian, thanks for joining. Um, thank you so much. It's absolutely fantastic. Right. I know it's it's getting it's getting very kind of out of control everywhere else except China now. Love the content videos. Seem like you could do. It. Thanks. Appreciate that. Mikhail. Can you explain the feel of the racket and leg from the tap to dog position? Yeah, it's the feel. The feel is like you want to create the like the whip action. And I like to talk about the, the actual whip. You know, you have the, the rope that when you create the whip, right? So when you're swinging, you want to get that whip. So you want to get very loose. You want to exaggerate that like looseness, like your forearm and the wrist, almost like allow it to happen. And then, you know, you, you can try this very easy, but being very loose and trying to hit the balls very easy, just to see if you can create that whip action. But uh, again, we have some video on that. I think it's easier when you watch and you can like see like slow motions, different angles. We have some video on that. So you can check that out. Do you think Federer will retire now? It's almost complete wash out. I, I don't think so. I think he will keep going. Now he has time to, you know, recover from the injury and the surgery and prepare in a, in a proper way. I think he's coming back. You think better? Uh, thanks, man. I'm having so much trouble with my serve right now. Service is very difficult. It's super complex. It takes a lot of practice, a lot of time, a lot of tosses, a lot of serves, repetition, you know, a lot of picking up the balls. I did it. I did it every single day for hundreds of serves. So I, I know very well. There's no favorite player. Serve, return of serve, forward, back, and, and ball and slice. Interesting question. Uh, try to make it very fast. Uh, favorite serve, John Isner. Obviously, his height is, you know, like contributing a lot to his like the level of serve but definitely it's the most deadly serve for me the return of serve Novak Djokovic uh forehand forehand I like feather backhand um backhand uh two-handed backhand Djokovic one-handed backhand uh I like I like Dominic team volleys Volleys and slides feather also, for, uh, for example. Hello, I follow you on Instagram. Thanks. Mm, who has the hardest second serve based on the guys you hit with? Honestly, I, I cannot say this because when we train, I, I don't think they really go for layer like real, real serves. Obviously they do, but you know, if you, if you play a match and it's different, I don't know if they would hit the same, maybe they would even slow down. But I remember the first training with Nole, and he told me, like, he was in the service. He said, okay, now second serves anywhere, All right? And then, and then I said, okay, let's, let's finally hit some return. Because obviously, when he was doing first serves, I think I, I, I could not really get some of them. And then first couple of serves, he was doing second serve. It was like I was not even close to the ball. Like, it was, it was like an easy ace. I remember it was on this side and he was slicing that serve, you know, to my forehand. I was not even close to get it. Like I could not even react. And then, and then I asked him, come on, is this really second serve? He said, yeah, second serve. So I remember that, that feeling was like, wow, how, how they returned this, how they returned this second serves. Like tough. Uh, six feet away space. Oh, sorry. That, that was six feet. Yes. That makes sense. Six feet. It's almost like two meters. Yeah. Not inches. Uh, what's your favorite current slam? Uh, Roland Garros, because I grew up on clay courts, and this for me this is like a kind of a real tennis. You can you can develop different points, you know, with all these drop shots, slices, different, um, creating some angles, and uh, you know it could be a little bit long. Some points can you know stretch, and they can have like 40, 50 shots in a rally, but. Like looking at the side where you can slide more and hit drop shots, I think it's very cool for playing and for watching. I just said that for the serve, I would pick John Isner. What's your string setup, string gauge tensions? 
I use at the moment this uh, Taiwanese string, T-A-A-N, 10. And uh, it's 1.25 or 1.30. Well, I think 1.25 millimeters. Gauge um, tension is 25 kilos, 25. It's just like 55 pounds. Why do I feel like I'm close to ball when I do volleys? I cannot say. It's just uh, getting to your body. It, if the if the ball comes to your body, you should usually hit the back end volley. So you need to think of it like back end volley should cover almost sixty five percent of the space, like two thirds of the space you cover with back end, and then only from here this third is the forehand. Maybe that can help. I don't know. Mm. Do you know why the Nikki Pilic tennis academy shut down? I didn't hear about it. I don't know. I guess it's you know for the for the safety measures. Pick one player from the past who's retired who you hit with. Uh, that's a cool question. Ooh, that's very tough. I have a couple of them. Uh, maybe maybe Gustavo Quirton, Brazilian. He was also one of my idols. I really like, love to watch him, especially on the clay. Do you think there are better players than the big four who may not be privileged enough to practice on the ATP? Uh, oh, participate. Uh, I don't think. I mean, if they are if they are better, they they would they would get to that level. So if there are some who are better, they will get there, but just it takes time. So I think it's you know. The the situation at the at the ATP, you know, those the big tournaments, it it paints the real picture at the moment. The younger players who are you know having the potential and the talents and all this hard work, uh, they will eventually get there, you know, if they deserve to be there. So that's it. Who's your least favorite skilled skilled person? I didn't think in that way. I I really respect all of the guys there. How to get more power on this two-handed backhand? Okay, I, I understand this. Uh, one of the reasons why players tend to kind of uh, struggle on the two-hander, you know, with the power, is because they get too tight, and you're using two hands. It's definitely, definitely, is less natural to kind of accelerate than one hand, right? You can just release one hand. Two hands, it's a little bit tougher. Uh, I would say. You first need to think about getting looser upper body, like you know shoulders, arms, everything. I would also encourage uh, a little bit bigger swing with more straight arms, not like bent arms. This this tend to be like tight, so more straight. You get more leverage, like a little bit higher racket position. Uh, that that can give you that uh, better power position with the racket is it's a bit higher, like you know in that position where, you, where you're just about to go for the racket drop and trying to use more legs. So starting from the ground up, you use the knees, you know, like from the knees and then hips, the kinetic chain, it helps you to kind of roll, twist, and then uncoil. The hips are actually the main driver of that force. And then, of course, like leading with that, uh, if you're right-handed with the left arm, non-dominant arm, you need to go all the way. So all these things combined, I, I know it's it's much easier to say because I've been doing that myself for a while, trying to improve my backhand. But uh, if you if you can think of some of those things, the next time you train, I think it will help. So try to get looser, a bit higher, like bigger swings, straight arms, get more leverage, use the legs and the hips to, to get uh, a bit more dry there. I hope that helps. You have a great channel and you seem to be very positive. Thanks. I try my best. It's not easy always to stay positive, especially you know in this period. But uh, I think it's all it's a choice, a choice you we all make. You're one of the coolest players I've ever seen on chat. You are extremely intelligent. Thank you so much. I mean, make me a bit shy now, but just trying to help and uh, use this opportunity to share some of the experiences. But at the moment. Um, just reading your comments, which I really enjoy, but I wanted to kind of go through the, the plan 
because I, I like to also provide some more value. Obviously, I'm, you know, hopefully I, I also help in this way, but I would really like just to touch on this topic, even though I know you all have heard a lot of different things and advice that you can go through while at home, but I would like to, I would like just to touch on that. But anyways, uh, I try to go quickly through this, but some questions just get me stuck there a bit. Uh, what other racket sports do you play and does it help your tennis? Mm, racket sports. Honestly, I didn't play and I don't play other sports. Sometimes I would, I would hit a few like uh, table tennis, you know, just for fun, but I uh, didn't do it for a while. So this is the thing I did. Uh, before I used to play basketball and some soccer, but not with, uh, with any racket sports. Mm, okay. Any suggestions for hyper extension of me? Hyper extension. To be totally honest, it's definitely familiar. Uh, the word, um, obviously, it's something that uh, related to some workouts, uh, something with the uh, uh, but I really cannot tell you some advice. I really don't want to pretend I'm expert with this. I did have some knee injury. Um, not sure exactly about the term. Uh, I think it's better that you, you know, reach out to more experts for this, for the, the injuries. There is a great channel on YouTube. Those two guys, uh, Brad, Bob and Brad. Bob and Brad. This is where I always, I mean, I just search on YouTube when I had injuries. For example, the last one I had is uh, pull calf. So every time I search, like they are one of the, the first videos that come up. I'm sure they have uh, even more than one video just for the hyper extension of the knee. So I highly recommend you just type that and you, you will see them. They're called Bob and Brad and they're also a bit funny. So, you know, when you when you have injury, you don't feel so good. You go there, they give you advice, plus they make some jokes there, and it's and they really know good. They, they really know uh, the field. I mean, they're experts, they're doctors, and they always demonstrate. They talk about it, and they show some exercises. So, yeah, just go for that. If you had a chance, would you change to one-handed one -handed question or keep to that? Like, uh, thanks, Warren. It's interesting question, and because at one point, I was, I think I was freshman at college and I was discussing with my coach and we said, okay, let's, let's give it a try. So for two days I was playing one hander and I have to say it felt amazing, especially in the, in the training, you know, when he was feeding me from the basket and I would just release that swing and I felt like so free suddenly, suddenly I felt like, wow, this is going to be a, a different game right now. But then I think the third day it was like some friendly match or something, and when I realized how difficult this is going to be, and this was actually just maybe a few weeks prior to our first official matches, it was just not enough time for this. Had I had, have I had like longer period of a couple of months? Maybe you know I would have gone through that process, but because I started playing that friendly match, and especially in the returns. I mean, there was no way I could control that ball. Like, if they served to my back end and I need to hit one hander return after two days, it was like, like a roulette. You know, it was like super risky and very tough for me to control. I, I could maybe play more slices, you know, but uh, I definitely felt at that moment there was no way I can, I can make it in this short time. And then I just came back to two hander. But, you know, it's an interesting question and a topic that many people are talking about. This is also a personal choice. I know many players who have actually switched, but this is usually this usually happens at younger age. Love your videos, thanks. My current ranking zero, no ranking at the moment. I didn't play tournaments. I did play last year one tournament uh, back in Serbia. And this is when I rolled my ankle in the, was it second round? Second round. I think there was second round of qualifying draw. I played against the first seed of the qualifying job who ended up playing the finals of the tournament. 
and this is where I rolled my ankle. So, you know, it was a little bit unfortunate. After that, I didn't play. I hope I hope to play this year. I'm preparing for that, and I'm super excited. I just uh, I just hope the whole situation will get better, and uh, that's it. Pick a player for the future to win a slam. Uh, Stefan Tsitsipas. Do you ever participate in local tournaments? Nope. Do you use the nylon or poly tan string stands? Uh, I think it's poly. Uh, how are you, buddy? Good, good. Monday, starting at the start of the week, I always like to do first a live, and then I plan for today to do interval training, and uh, this is still going to be on the bike because I still don't want to risk running for the calf, even though it feels like it's almost recovered, but I have to be careful. Who is your least behaved tennis player? Like I said, I, I mentioned the uh, curious, you know, some moments he he is like just, I think, crossing the the line with, with his behavior. And uh, there are some other guys, but for me personally, I, I can I can understand and understand because the all the the pressure and the, the sacrifices that you put, you know, in order to get there and then on certain days, it's just not working, you know. For you and everything is like you think like it's almost not fair or how is this possible like i put so much effort and i can understand the frustration but again if most of the players they can control you know uh, some of those exceptions uh, these guys are like uh, getting warnings and fines the penalties and uh, yeah it's just it, it's tough you know it's i understand them Watched Agassi video recently. Agassi made me change my back and grip. Two-handed righty. Okay, on my left hand, where my webbing between thumb and index is on number one, and right hand on number two. Ooh, I. It's not easy for me to understand this, but it's very interesting. I, I really like this question. So my left hand where my webbing between the thumb and the index is on one the webbing i guess it's this one right okay it's on the one wow uh you mean number one is the how do you call it the the bevel but number one is all the way on the top so if your left hand it's there is on the top that's that's almost impossible i don't know how that's how you can play with that so i have the racket here no that's not possible maybe it, i didn't understand um right hand on number two yeah right hand makes sense number two this is the this is the hammer but number but left hand it cannot be this way oh you cannot see it now so the Okay, here. This on the top, right, is number one. So if I have my left, right, on the this thing on the top, that's impossible. That's Western grip for the left hand forehand, right? And then here, maybe you you got it wrong, but uh, if you can try to rephrase it, then I'll check it again. Thanks for the help. I hope you make a serving video. I need to go. All right. Take care, man. Thanks for the topic question. Since most tennis points are ending with first three shots, do you think the Spanish defensive counter country game style has a future? <laughs> That's a good question. I I also think in, in, the, in the same direction that, you know, everything is becoming faster. So, but... It's becoming faster in terms of, you know, rackets produce more speed and like the balls have your top spin, but also players are getting more fit, more flexible, like more endurance, like have more endurance. So it, it wouldn't be surprised like that, you know, it kind of follow each other. Like, you know, the players will be able to get certain balls that before they were not. So the points will still go on. It's it's tough to predict these things. I also wondered uh, many times where and how the tennis will look like in 50 years, you know, and it's always interesting. So it's probably the hardest thing to improve in tennis. Yeah, it's the most uh, challenging. 
even though you are in control, there are no factors such as opponents, you know, shots and uh, different spins and everything. But here you are like, you have the toss, you have the, the backswing and the body turn. It's it's very complex. But when you adaptable, it's easier. When you're adaptable, it's easier. I guess so. It's an interesting way to say it. Do you use any tricks for watching the ball, like using the frame of the racket as a guide? Honestly, no. But I, I know that you should be kind of tracking the ball all the way up to contact and looking at the contact more. But it, this is very tough to do. I tried. And you can see this with Feather as, as he keeps his head, as he hits the ball, right? Or the one-hander, it's because he keeps his eyes like on the, on the contact and helps him to kind of maintain stability. Uh, but it's very tough, you know, if you don't have the habit. Do you think a vegan diet like Djokovic does can work well for pro tennis players in general? It's tough to say. I mean, it definitely worked out for him. And uh, I know many other athletes are doing that. I would kind of think so. Cannot really say because I, I haven't tried to go vegan. But um, I'm trying to, you know, stay healthy. And uh, just uh, every morning I make this uh, celery juice mixed with some other, let's say, fruits or carrots also. And uh, try to avoid fast food like as much as possible of course sometimes I, I would go for it but like in general obviously it's super important the diet I just don't know for vegan what racket are you currently using it's this one blade right oh, yeah. but it's it's a bit opposite so wilson blade 98 it's, it's good i like it um, how do you think most of the players are doing with no tournaments? Not everybody's in our sponsor. Yeah, it's it's very difficult. It's it's tough period for everybody. Like even even the people who are working you know, at homes, like for for their companies or laptops, like everybody has a has less income, I guess, and it's it's tougher period. But again, we can focus on other things. Uh, we can do something that we didn't or maybe find ways uh, to practice uh, different different habits, different rituals, and maybe even adapt some, adopt some, some new things to do. And uh, I would highly recommend you all guys check the knowledge uh, post for, for this, for the virus and for everything. Like, so you just go uh, on Instagram, you go there and check it, Novak Djokovic, like his Instagram. He's a Joker Nolan. I'm sure most of you follow him. And he wrote it in a, in a very, very nice way. How we should actually use this time to kind of focus on some things that are maybe even the most important, you know, such as being with your families. And uh, this is a time where, you know, you can do these things more than ever. So it's 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 great way. Plus, you, you will stay safe. Mm, will you practice with Roger Feather? I don't know. I hope so. Middle of thumb and index. Okay. Middle of thumb. Yeah. Middle of thumb and index. Yeah. On left hand is on the first. This cannot be. It cannot be on the on the first bevel, like as as I explained. Middle of and index of fingers. Ah, okay. Middle of thumb. Okay. Middle of thumb. Okay. Okay, that makes sense more. And uh, middle of thumb and index fingers. Ah, oh, between. You're talking about the area between. Okay. I see it. That's still very extreme, extremely open grip. Um, I think you should talk about more. You should say what's what's the grip for left hand how how do you how do you call that grip like on the right you call it is continental right this is where the index the index like thing is on the bevel number two 
right? And then this one, the way you set it, if I if I put it there, that looks like it's it's the same grip on the opposite side. It's it's too open. But anyways, I will I will look into that. I will search and check the Agassiz grip. It's very interesting. Thank you for that. Anyways, how much can a good racket help one's game compared to a bad racket? This depends on the level of the player. I mean, the higher the, the level of the player, the more difference, you know, it means with, with the racket, right? If you're like a beginner, it doesn't really matter which racket you're using. So the higher you go, uh, there's, a, there's a difference for sure. So, and uh, I'm also uh, now doing some research and I will do some modification with the racket. I will play around with some weight and uh, try to get a different swing weight. Whatever happened to your student? Nothing happened. He's uh, training hard every day, looking forward for the period that when the tournament start again. And uh, I will actually play with him today. So we train regularly. He's still he's still up, out there grinding. How do you hit the ball on the rise? By adjusting your feet and by seeing the ball early. You have to see the ball early so you can, you know, move your feet get your body in the right position and uh, try to take the ball obviously as it as it comes up comes up off the ground not allowing it to start dropping and uh, in that case your swing you want to make it more horizontal and kind of more across across the ball right you cannot really go from low to high there because the ball is already like it's rising. So you kind of go across horizontal swing. I'm training at home some days. I have a court in the back of my house. Lucky. That's um, unbelievable, Henrik. Uh, lucky. For sure you are. What are your thoughts on 95 square inch? Right I never tried to play. And uh, yeah, I guess it's it's much tougher to get a clean shot i don't know what can be the advantage maybe it's it's the faster racket speed a uh, racket head speed but it's tough you have to be very good with uh you know with seeing the ball and uh, getting in the perfect position have you ever had a hit with roger nope never he just start warming up for practice sessions exam begin hitting so. that's amazing It's never too early. If if that works for you, if you need one hour to warm up, it's it's great. Who has been your favorite player to hit with? Uh, Djokovic for sure. Bautista, Tsitsipas. Um, and many others. I really enjoyed uh, Mike Bryan. I, I enjoyed the Damir Jumkur. I enjoyed with uh, with mm, all of them. With uh, pretty much everybody I hit, it was amazing. Uh, Bublik as well. It was super fun. Who has been your favorite player to hit? I just ran. Uh, would you ever use a Yonix? I've never played, but I'm always open for you know new things, trying. Not sponsored, nothing. I hope I will soon make some progress there. Also, Agassi recommends Eastern Grip for overhead. I used to do, and I had a great overhead. I do that. Okay, a little bit tough to understand, but I really want to just go quickly through uh, this list. We've already been 45 minutes here, and I appreciate everybody being there. Thanks, thanks so much. Um, for overheads, yeah, just quickly, it, it's going to be definitely just the regular. It's the grip for serve. So pretty much continental cannot be cannot be eastern. It's almost impossible. Mm, train with Zhao Souza. No, never, never train with Souza. You get paid for practicing with the pros? Uh, no. Nope. Actually, it depends. What do you mean by the getting paid? For, for me, like I get paid plenty because it's the feeling I get. It's it's priceless. So for me, it's like it's the highest pay. 
how to hit winners when stretched out position. From California, Chad. Honestly, Chad, you don't hit winners when you're stretched. Unless you're Nadal or Djokovic, it, it, it's super difficult. Like In most cases, you just want to kind of hit the neutral ball back so you can recover. It's it's very tough in your club, what type of surface you have. We have hard courts, clay courts. My Instagram page is Milan Krintin. So we'll type here. Good question. So it's Instagram. Uh, all right. Okay, I hope this this should be fine. Um. So this is my first and last name. Why is any training at ITF level almost so expensive? Not just at ITF level. It's expensive. On all the levels, if you if you train from you know younger age, if you have a coach and all this, it's expensive, super expensive sport. What's your best least favorite surface to play on? Maybe maybe that will be some indoor like carpet like surface with those little little like uh, little how do you call it? rubber balls, very small, and it tends to get slippery. Like I used to play on those courts like in Germany sometimes when it was raining some clubs they have it it was I didn't like that what's your okay you're welcome all right I managed to answer everybody pretty much just quickly so after 47 minutes of answering the questions I need to make the comment there for people who just come after if you want to know what you can do at home so my first suggestion is to focus on the on the videos that you can find online for the pros. And let let's say you you like to watch Federer, you like to watch Kyrgios, whatever. There are plenty of matches. There are full matches you can watch on YouTube. You just type the player, and uh, you can also so on patterns something that you can kind of memorize. Write the notes for that. Slow motion videos. Let's say time in slow motion.